Hello and welcome back to another War Tales guide, this time the guide to the Pugilist. My name is Saiken and I am doing concise and non-repetitive, no bullshit, informative guides. This is the class guide for the new class Pugilist. We're going to go over the skills, what you need to know and what build I would recommend. So let's jump right into it. So, off the bat, the Pugilist comes into play with fastest fist weapons that are going to be ultra fast in hitting but low damage on each of the individual strikes. I would classify the class as a bruiser slash melee DPS uh, with a lot of attacks. The class itself comes up with four different specializations. Uh, the first one is Wrestler, which is potentially most uh, along the Bruiser style, where you can fight against individual opponents, change their positions, kind of alter the battlefield a little bit and take a few hits. Uh, the second one uh, would be Bruiser as in the class, but I found that Wrestler definitely has a little bit more sustaining uh, power. The Bruiser is more of an offensive uh, type of fighter where the uh, Pugilist can uh, attack enemies, apply fragility and ignore part of uh, their guard. So I would say out of uh, the book, the Bruiser comes most uh, likely as the tank killer. The third one uh, that you will start with is the Slayer, the only one of the three basic starting uh, um, concepts which only has light armor, but it comes with ethereal precision, which essentially is kind of a rogue equivalent where you can apply bleeding and on top of that either corrosion, uh, um, uh, corrosion uh, which uh, reduces armor or poison, which directly deals hit point damage to the target. So uh, the expense of uh, less armor comes with a higher offensive potential. And finally, you can unlock the Tyrant. In order to do that, you will need to win the Balerian um, Arena, which is Oris Arena. Once you have done that, you can go to Turk. In Turk, uh, you just need to speak in the topmost tavern with the old mercenary that will teach you all of the things to know about uh, the tyrant ability uh, tyrant class which is really kind of the best of all worlds comes with medium armor doesn't have stat bony like the other classes if you can see almost each of uh, them in this case here minus 10 dexterity here uh, quite a bit less constitution but more dexterity and critical hit. And Tyrant really doesn't have any kind of stat modification, so to speak. It just comes with medium armor and an absolute awesome ability called Quick Attacks, uh, which would be my recommendation. So before we jump into the build itself, I would like to talk a bit about the mechanic of the class itself. Because the Pugilist was always one of those classes which really needed a little bit of time before it grow onto me. Each of uh, the weapons itself uh, that the Pugilist can wield, but on top of it all of the abilities really can have two effects and all of them relate to their stances. So the uh, Pugilist can have either an aggressive or a defensive stance. Um, as the name suggests, the aggressive one typically deals more damage, the defensive one typically uh, does more utility and protects them. I initially thought that it also means uh, that the Pugilist will take less damage in uh, some of the stances, but that is not the case. So the only thing that the stances really do is the rider on the attacks will be different, but they can be quite different. And let's start with the basic abilities so that you can see at the example of Tyrant what that means. If you go into a attack with Tyrant in an attack stance, you will uh, generate additional rage stacks. Rage uh, increases the damage by 5% and is stackable, so you can have 20 rage stacks and essentially have plus 100% damage. Whilst uh, the defense stance uh, makes sure that the enemy is being knocked back after the last attack. That is particularly important on boarding missions as it allows you to insta-kill enemies with that, but it can also be quite good because you can knock enemies into AOE effects of others 
basically set up uh, multi-kills for the next time. You see the same as an example with Slayer, where the um, aggressive, aggressive stance or the uh, attack stance will apply two poison uh, for the entire attack, and the defensive stance will apply one corrosion. Corrosion uh, m means 15% loss of armor at the end of uh, the round. Two poison stacks is 10% hit points loss at the end of their round, not at the end of your round. So a lot to factor in when it comes to playing the pugilist in reality it's actually far less complicated than the game makes it out uh, to be i tried a lot of stun switching and really try to use both of uh, the combos um, try to kind of maximize the value out of it the reality out of my experience is fights are too short to really justify that you are stance dancing a lot um, you should build your character with something in mind with a clear goal in mind and then the stance is more a supportive element an optionality so to speak that you do have but you should have a standard stance that your build should have in mind which nicely leads us to what is the build that I would recommend. As always, there are multiple opportunities, but I really, after trying all of them, uh, homed onto one build in particular. So my impression with the class was that just looking at the specialization, Slayer is a fantastic starting uh, specialization, and I would uh, recommend you if you start with the Pugilist, um, it is the easiest for you to use the Pugilist with light armor as kind of a pure DPS, go in and go out. If you feel uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, Pugilist needs to be more of an off-tank, I would recommend the Wrestler Stance to begin with. Both of them, however, in my perspective, are outshined by the Tyrant Stance, uh, or Tyrant Specialization, rather, as that one is the best of all four, in my humble opinion. I am uh, building the Pugilist as a single target killer and with that in mind we don't want to uh, fight for a prolonged period of time but I always wanted to at least uh, build them um, sturdy enough so that they can stand at the front line without the threat of uh, going down and Tyrant really offers that. For starters we do have medium armor which in my case means we have a little bit over 500 armor Trust me, that is plenty. Uh, you will not have any problem with that whatsoever. Uh, the character comes in at 30% guard. And with a couple of tricks that I will show you, you can double the guard by being in position. So that 60% damage reduction on nearly 600 armor. Very, very tanky. Um, and the character on top of that deals a lot of damage. And we'll, we will look into why exactly that is the case. I use uh, Valerius Victory simply because uh, I talked about the concept of uh, Valor Spenders and Valor Generators. For me, uh, the Pugilist falls under the category of uh, single target Valor Spenders. So um, I want to get a little bit of Valor back once uh, they kill something and they do kill something. The class is actually quite competent in that. Tyrant as their main ability. Um, offers either a stack in Rage, which for longer combats, when I'm fighting in uh, combats with uh, reinforcements, for instance, is a nice uh, extra add-on, or in the defensive stance, whenever I need to knock someone off um, board. So the way that I would play the character mainly is to attack normally in whatever stance you want, and then uh, either stay in that attack stance in order to continue uh, building up rage or switching defense stance, knocking someone off, next round comes along, knock someone else off, then switch back to aggressive stance and continue with normal attacks. That way you maximize DPS and also get a lot of nice utility out of uh, quirk attacks. In terms of the level 5 abilities, I looked into uh, Focus, which applies both of the stance effects at, at once. I looked into Personal Challenge to kind of apply status effects and then gain more rage over time in the next round. But all of that has too little payoff. It is too slow. I looked into Adaption to continuously stance change. 
which in my perspective is a nice idea for some builds it works but i personally uh, did shy away from it because really if you plan your attacks well enough you don't need to switch more than once per round so it ended up with stance knowledge which is only unlocked once you do have uh, the specialization if i don't have stance uh, that specialization tyrant if i don't have stance knowledge i personally went with adaption just to make it easier um, during the leveling process attacks uh, stance uh, here um, with stance knowledge will have an extra amount of three percent health per hit that's a lot with 10 hits per round that's an easy 30 percent of the health gone depleted specifically higher hit point enemies are suffering from that defense stance all attack uh, uh, that we are suffering uh, will re uh, will uh, reflect 30 percent of uh, the damage so what we want to do is we want to end in defense stance as often as possible to basically reflect back 30% of uh, the damage. If you want to uh, go even further with that, there is one oil that you can apply to your weapon for an additional 20% damage uh, reflection, which basically gives you 50% damage reflection. Keep in mind though, that's just a nice little added bonus. I really would uh, rather take less damage than reflect it back to the enemy. On level 8, I chose Stance Mastery, mainly because it is 20% flat uh, damage bonus and in Defense Stance, um, damage taken is reduced by 20%. That is on top of protection, that is on top of uh, the uh, in position. Uh, so you will take uh, very, very little damage if you uh, position your character well enough and have Stance Mastery um, to basically reduce the damage um, quite substantially. Um, Charge over as well as fatal touch, really very much situational. Brutal frenzy, every fifth attack executes one attack of opportunity. That's a 20% uh, improvement, but it happens only every fifth attack. Realistically, I can just take 20% more damage and have the better choice with that. Um, I go with defensive repost so that whenever we're discontinuing uh, or disengaging, we have a 50% chance to make an attack of opportunity instead of getting one. But equally acceptable would be unstoppable in order to get behind the line. And then finally, I would definitely uh, um, recommend to you the uh, legendary um, thrashing which as an ability is absolutely fantastic it's the highest single dar uh, target damage ability that i've seen so far and it's an absolute boss killer so that is definitely a huge plus um, and we'll see it in action so that um, in itself is the build if you combine it cleverly um, and in in my case, for instance, I put putrid oil on the weapons, which um, creates a 10% stackable uh, damage buff, which is also the reason why I didn't want to go for, for instance, fragility um, here, because essentially the put uh, putrid oil with fever does something very similar, even better. Um, and with uh, the Ripper legendary uh, weapon, you can attack even more often, so quite a few attacks per round. Long-winded way of saying um, the character itself um, would be very strong if you do have the path abilities that allow you to be in position um, once you are supported then the character would even have 60% damage reduction on top of it and is a good actually a very good tank and an absolute monster in damage dealing one of the trinkets that i would recommend you would be the powered mother of uh, mother of pearl which again is a trinket that you get in Beleriand, uh, which allows uh, the unit as long as they are engaged to completely ignore guard that uh, is nicely overriding uh, all of uh, the abilities that you would see here with corrosion uh, for uh, for instance where essentially you're bypassing uh, guard completely so that's it uh, let's see a couple of uh, examples of actual game footage so that you can see how the build performs in combat all right so we challenged higher level characters uh, these here are the highest level characters that you can find level 14 guards and really that's a great example you do have a foot soldier here with a uh, this is by the way expert difficulty expert difficulty uh, so 
uh, you it's as hard as it gets from a pure combat uh, perspective they come in with a whooping 500 armor mind you we do have even more armor with our current uh, build than they uh, would have and come in with 46 percent of defense so i just want to showcase even without uh, the legendary skill just how good uh, the build is in dealing and ignoring armor um, almost all together we come in with a aggressive stance that will give us rage in order to build up um, and the defensive stance afterwards will give us the delirium for a couple more attacks so let's start with uh, normal attacks you can see we're coming in with three attacks just um, off the bat all three of them crits and all three of them nicely ignore enemy armor disengage for another 213 the guy's already looking like he does not want to continue fighting we're switching into defensive stance uh, in order to uh, continue getting delirium stacks that is from our uh, legendary weapon uh, delirium stacks will uh, build up over time and if I then switch back to aggressive uh, stance or attack stance we get one bonus attack for every delirium stack which by the way doesn't deplete the delirium stack so in a, in a sense sometimes and I did that in longer fights I built up delirium stacks for three rounds and then had six bonus attacks uh, essentially wiping out a character with a single attack so we stay in uh, defensive stance after we have completely taken out uh, this guy and we're going to one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a guy back here taunting for a nice little weakening so let's see how well we can stand our own against the level 14 enemy just so that you see even without being supported how well the build perform good let's see how well we defend ourselves uh, these were a couple of hits so full attack routine from this level 14 character barely did uh, the absolute minimum of damage most of it was uh, more so as you can see reflected back to him we haven't dealt any damage to him but even with that little bit of damage 30% uh, came back so we're standing very nicely so the question now is how does our retaliation in the next round with more delirium stacks look like so a couple of reinforcements are coming and we're going to focus on the pugilist alerts uh, since we left it out in defense uh, stance switch back to aggression and get those extra hits in that i was talking about one two three four five six uppercut done well, that was a hundred to zero um, against one guy defender comes in 60 percent uh, damage reduction how about uh, we're doing one, two, three, four, oh boy, five, this is going to be costly, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, we can firmly say we have not uh, uh, let him take the better of us. Uh, you cannot die in your own attack, but uh, unfortunately I've uh, overlooked that there uh, that he indeed had repost. Anyways, the point still stands. Uh, we dealt so substantial damage uh, that we got a hundred and a thousand and two hundred uh, hit points uh, plus sixty percent guard down in just one go all right so to redeem ourselves from uh, this phenomenal failure in a guide uh, i wanted to show you how it's done a little bit later in the same fight so these guards as long as they are alive do have the ability to whenever they take damage uh, more specifically a critical damage in melee they counterattack, which is the only reason why Uder went down in the first place however now we're a little bit later in the fight and I just want to show you uh, how an attack with uh, more delirium looks like so we're going in for very very solid damage uh, it's uh, like 650 700 damage just in a couple of hits 
And that's how it's done. Uh, that is the Pugilist in a nutshell. Very fun class if you know how to play him and if you are not making the same mistake as I do, full attacking into someone who counterattacks. That is not the way to do it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this guide. I have plenty of other War Tale guides. If you enjoy the content, please leave a comment and a like down below. That spreads the word and populates uh, the YouTube algorithm and gives it a nudge in the right direction. Thanks a lot and have a good day. Bye bye.